Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? I'm a little bit tired today and I apologize for not being my normal upbeat self. Am I normally upbeat? I don't think so. In fact, I'm normally, well, not normally, but I'm a, often kind of down on myself. But not today. Today's a good day. Because uh, this weekend I got to spend quite a bit of time down here and do some new things I hadn't done before with my tools. One was this uh, joint, which I've never performed before. Uh, I had a friend at work who broke one of his uh, kitchen drawers and he was like, can you make me a new drawer? And I said, sure. He had looked online for like replacement drawers. And they were all, you know, in the hundred and plus range. And I was like, yeah, I can make one and I can, I'll make it for, you know, not much. The main reason was I'm going to be building a desk and dressers, and I need to practice making drawers anyway. I've made drawers before, but I've never made them um, the proper way, I guess, with some sort of, like, tongue and groove or anything like that. I've always done, uh, you know, uh, just either pocket holes or <laughs> uh, dowels or something like that. I've never, I, in fact, I've never even done like dovetails or anything. Like That all seems complete overkill to me when it comes to a simple drawer. If it was something that was going to carry a decent amount of weight, sure. But, uh, so I wanted to try that joint and I'm not really sure what it's called. I've tried Googling it and it's really not something, I've seen it called a housing joint, which to me a housing joint is just a dado joint, but it would, I guess a housing joint really close to the edge. I've also seen it called a tongue and dado, so I don't know what you call it. I don't know that it has an official name, but um, I will I will gladly or proudly admit that I did that whole box um, without messing up, <laughs> and it turned out great. Um, it required me to do some fine fine tuning on the table saw to get because I don't have a dado stack, so I had to cut all the grooves. Actually, let me show you. I was looking around for my my samples because I of course made samples. Um, I don't have a data stack, so like all of the side cuts were made um, with a regular blade, just multiple passes. Um, the groove for the um, plywood bottom, which was quarter inch plywood, had to be made that way simply because quarter inch plywood isn't quarter inch. So if I did this with a router, it would have been sloppy. So I wanted to get a good fit, so I did multiple passes there. Um, one of the things I did, which I guess I'm just weird, but every time I see somebody do these things on YouTube, it's like, it's not that complex. Just cut it, right? But that's just me being elitist because it's, doesn't, it's not really like a, this isn't something that you got to spend all day trying to set up. You just grab your boards and cut, and then... In, so this time, what I did was I set the box up, and I marked the corners that I needed to cut out, and uh, I marked where the where the the mouthpiece goes on each board. And what I found was that's extremely helpful. <laughs> and it's just my elitist, uh, you know, like attitude getting in the in my own way when I say things like that. And so it was really nice to have each board marked up like I had the tops marked I had the faces marked uh, and the corners that were getting cut or the slots where the where the um, tongue I guess the groove went or the dado went um, I had all that laid out pre pre cut and then went to cutting and the whole box went together seamlessly um, I also did some edge banding on the top out of poplar I cut down a piece of scrap poplar that I had and put that on and then cut it uh, flush trimmed it with a router and that worked out really nice um the only thing i can say is i used uh i used i had a piece i wanted to show you I, um it's not birch plywood I, it might be birch but it's not birch plywood it's not the good stuff it's um it's called sandy ply uh from home depot i think it's a home depot exclusive s-a-n-d-e ply and um it's got a it's got a pretty decent finish it needs sanded it's it's kind of fuzzy but 
the veneer on this is super duper thin, um, like 30 second of an inch. It's really thin. Uh, you could sand through it pretty quick. But what I had was, here's the piece. Um, and the nice thing about this plywood is it's got very few voids, very, very few voids. So that's nice. Um, but <laughs> that being said, I've also discovered um, it's it's only like $35. So this is a half inch sheet. I think the half inch sheet was 35 compared to 45 for the birch stuff, the good stuff. Um, it's only one, two, three, four, five plies. So the birch stuff has a lot more plies, a lot more stability. But the veneer on this, this was supposed to be one of the box sides. Uh, I think it was 19 inches. But I cut it, and when I did, I the, the whole uh, veneer lifted right here. Like, there's a huge bubble. This whole area right here is not glued down. And um, that was kind of disappointing. And there's a few other pieces where the veneer is very poorly adhered. Um, like that. And so sanding on the edges like this, I found myself pulling up pieces of the veneer. So um, overall, I think that for the dollar, if you're building something like a simple drawer that's going to spend most of its life hidden, um, this plywood is perfect. It's cheap enough. Um, it's strong enough. It's stable enough. Um, if you can work around some veneer lifting, it's okay. Uh, ultimately, though, now that I've worked with it, um, it does blow out very easily, almost like if you've ever um, if you ever cut Luon, it chips out just as bad as Luon does. Um, so I think ultimately, when I go to build the bookcase and the and the um, or not the bookcase, the desk and the dressers, I'm going to use uh, expensive birch veneer. I was going to use that, but I'm just not satisfied enough uh, to do that. So I'll use the good stuff. But overall, I spent a day down here, two days down here. Got the box made and finished and delivered to him today. I started using my organizers and got a bunch of screws and stuff put away. I made, I don't think you can see it, but I cleaned the workbench first of all. That, that looks different. I made a hanger for my grandfather's watch. If you could see it, it's back there by the license plate. Um, maybe I'll put a picture up if I remember to take a picture. But um, it was a good day. It, it was a good day of working. And then uh, work today was good. So. Uh, despite all the problems in my life right now, <laughs> monetary problems, um, it was good. So I hope you had a good weekend, and I appreciate you coming back and checking in on me. And I hope that you uh, have a great week this week, and I hope that you'll continue to come back and check on me, because I really love having you here. So thank you, everybody, uh, for stopping by. Thank you for being amazing people and wonderful friends. And thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Today's random fact comes from worldcentral.com. What animal's name means river horse? World history, the ancient Greeks gave the name hippopotamus to a big barrel-shaped animal they saw in Africa. In English, using the Latin spelling hippopotamus has kept the name. It is a combination of the Greek words hippos, meaning horse, and potamos, meaning river.